What's going on guys? My name is Kerry and today I'm going to tell you what you need to consider before buying a home in a manufactured home park. The reality is that not all parks are created equal, so I'm going to touch on everything from pad rent to park location because it's all going to have a big impact on the enjoyment of the house while you live there and the value of the home when it comes time to sell. So let's get after it. By far the most controversial polarizing topic when it comes to manufactured homes is the idea of pad rent. This is a situation where you buy a home and rent the lot on a monthly or yearly basis. Some people love it, some people hate it. And I'm not gonna get into why I think this works well because I've already done a full video on it. I'm gonna talk about what you want to look for if you've already decided that living in a manufactured home park is the route you wanna take because it's a great option. The first thing you wanna look at is how much is the pad rent. In my area, they range from about 425 up to around 550, but everywhere is gonna be a little bit different. I've had people comment on the channel that some areas they're as low as 230, and then another person commented that in Florida, they're over $1,000 a month. You have to find out what that range is in your area so that you know if you found something on the low end, you're getting a good deal, or if it's getting too high, then maybe you want to avoid that park and look for something different. So you have to find out what the pad rents are in your market. Next, you want to find out what's included in that fee and what's extra. In my area, it's pretty standard that sewer water taxes on the land and snow removal are going to be included and anything else like power or gas is going to be an extra expense that's covered by the homeowner. Finally, you absolutely need to know what the regulations are in your area for increasing the rent on the lot where your home sits. In my area, the park owner can increase the rent once per year as long as they give three months notice, but not more than what's set out by the province. The province calculates the price increase based on the 12 month average percent change in the consumer price index, which for 2021 is only 1.4% plus a proportional amount for local government levies and regulated utility fees. That's not bad, but every province and every state are gonna be different, so it's absolutely crucial that you find out what the regulations are in the area that you want to buy. Assume there's gonna be an increase on the pad rent every year, and then if it doesn't, it's just a bonus. The last thing you want, especially if you're on a fixed income, is to buy a home that's already at the top of your monthly budget only to find out that 12 months later that the pad rent is increasing and all of a sudden the home you bought is no longer affordable. Find out the pad rent, find out what's included, and then find out how much it can be increased in a 12 month period and that way there's no surprises. When you're buying a house, the last thing you want is surprises, so let's get rid of them. The next thing to consider, and we've heard it all before, but it's one of the most important things to consider when buying real estate, so we're gonna mention it again, is location, location, location. And this absolutely holds true when looking at manufactured home parks. Every town or city has some areas that are nicer than others, and that's just the way it is. There's the best areas, there's the worst areas, there's everything in between. And then with some new manufactured home parks, there's a whole nother area that doesn't even have classification because it's 20 minutes past the last known civilization. Some of the older manufactured home parks are in the best areas because when they're originally built in the 70s and 80s, they were the park that was 20 minutes out of town. But since then, the towns have grown around them and now they're in a very desirable place to be. If there's more than one option in a nice area, look at what's close by that's gonna benefit you. Is it close to your job? If you're retired or retiring, is it close to the golf course? If you have kids, is it close to schools or parks? Think about all the things you do outside your home, then identify a park that gives you the best access to as much as possible. I live in an area where a lot of people come to retire. So when I look for a lot, I look for something close to a golf course or by the lake. Looking for similar selling features in your area will help add to the home's value if and when it comes time to sell. When you find a park with a pattern that fits your financial budget in an area you wanna live, the next thing you wanna look at is the lot sizes within that park. Some people might not realize this, but the pad rent usually isn't calculated on the size of the lot. It's just a blanket pad rent for the entire park. 
So that big corner lot is gonna have the same pad rent as one of the smaller interior lots. Here's an example of a home with affordable pad rent in a great location. And as you can see, we found a lot that is a little bit bigger than the rest. So even though we've got all this extra space going over towards this tree, it still has the same pad rent as the other homes in the park. So we've got all that space there, the nice wide yard, and then we've got a little bit of space on the other side of the home as well. The next thing to consider when you're deciding on a manufactured home park is the ownership and management of the park. What I mean by that is do the owners take pride in the park? Are they making improvements? Is it well kept? The best way to find that out is to drive through the park you're considering. Look at all the things that the owners and manager would look after. Look at the boulevard, the streets, and the common areas. Are they well kept or do they need work? At the park I just showed you, almost every single time I go there, I see the park co-manager Gary out working to keep the place looking good. And you know what? It does. It isn't a brand new park, but it's kept in such amazing condition and that makes it a really great place to live. This is extremely important to look for because if the owners and management team don't care, gradually over time, the quality of the entire place slowly deteriorates. I've seen parks built in the 70s and 80s that are a lot nicer and likely a better place to live than some parks built in the 90s and 2000s, strictly because of the way they're looked after. So when you're out looking for a manufactured home, don't just look at the house, look at the park as a whole because that's gonna be a reflection of the park owner and management team. The last thing to think about is the demographic of the park because some have age restrictions and some are family friendly. Over the years, I've dealt with all kinds of people, some who are looking for 55 plus, others who are looking for family friendly. So it all comes down to personal preference. However, I always caution the folks looking at the 55 plus park that when it comes time to sell, they've essentially eliminated half of the eligible buyers by being in a park that only lets in people over the age of 55. That isn't a problem if you plan to live there forever, but if you don't, there's gonna be half of the people waiting to buy your house because half of the buyers in the market are gonna be under 55 years old. Again, it all comes down to personal preference, but it's definitely something you wanna consider before pulling the trigger on a certain type of park. So before you buy a home in a manufactured home park, that's a few things I think you definitely want to be clear on. You've got the pattern, the location, the lot sizes, the park ownership and management team, and the demographic within the park. I hope this information helps you out if you're looking for the perfect manufactured home park to call home. That's all I've got for today. If you found this information interesting, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.